uh, Al Ritt uh, from Longmont, Colorado. Uh, I uh, teach a lot of fly tying classes. I guide some fly fishing up there, and I work for uh, Peak Vices, uh, U.S. made uh, fly tying vice. Uh, tonight I'm going to be tying a, a fly um, with a new material uh, called a fish skull from Flymen Fishing Company. Uh, and what those look like uh, is there a replacement for uh, a cone uh, head on your larger streamer flies and that type of thing. And they're a little bit unique in that they go on after you've tied your fly in. Uh, so they're very easy to apply. They also make a very nice transition from your fly body uh, into, um, your, into your weighted head. Uh, some of the materials we're going to use, we're going to use this Arctic foxtail, uh, which I've been using a lot in place of marabou because it's so much more durable. Uh, and we're going to be using a, a dubbing material called Senyo's Laser Dub. Uh, it's a very nice, long, fibered dubbing material with a little bit of sparkle to it. Uh, and it tapers out and veils uh, fly bodies very nicely. Uh, for the body itself, we're going to use a little bit of an underbody, uh, just this lead tape. Uh, you could use lead wire instead if you'd rather. And for the main body, just a little bit of uh, crystal chenille, pretty generic stuff. Um, so I'm going to put this on a TMCO 5262 uh, streamer hook. And we'll get that set up in the vise, and uh, we're ready to go. Okay, so you can do this fly with really any, any of your streamer hooks, whatever your favorite happens to be. Um, I like TMCO hooks, and like I said, this is a 5262. Um, I'm going to start just by putting down a layer of thread. Uh, that layer of thread will help your materials uh, stay on your hook a little bit better. Once I got a little bit of thread down, it takes some of this lead tape and just, it's got an adhesive side to it. I cut it in a long, thin strip. And I'm going to wrap this on the hook for a little bit extra weight. And this is going to be a cone head fly, but you'll notice with these Flymen Bead Company fish gulls that we don't put the cone on first, it goes on last. After I got the lead tape on, just cover that up just a little bit, just to lock everything down. And then I'm going to take the thread back to the tail mounting point, which is the back of the straight portion of the shank of the hook. And I'm going to get a little clump of this Arctic fox tail. Much more durable than marabou, so I've been using this a lot for my streamers. And I'm cutting a clump, maybe just a little bit. I like my tails a little bit sparse, so I'm clipping it just a little bit less than the hook gap. And I'm going to measure that about the length of the shank of the hook. And mount that right where I left the thread at the back of the straight portion of the shank. Wrap down on that, and I'm going to cut the butts off just about even with the back of that lead tape so that when I tie those down, they sort of blend in a little bit and smooth out the body just a little bit. And the last thing I'm going to do with the tail is I'm just going to lift it up, put what I call a support wrap underneath, pull forward, and anchor on the shank of the hook. And that'll help keep your materials from rolling down off the back of the hook on your fly. The main body of the fly is going to be some crystal chenille. And you could get some longer fibered crystal chenille if you want. Um, vary the effects and the colors, of course, on this fly. Tie that in at the rear. Bring your thread forward. And I'm going to stop a little bit shy of the very nose uh, of the fly just to leave room for the fish skull at the end. And bring the crystal chenille forward. Nice even wraps. You see we're stopping a little bit back from the, from the eye of the hook. I'm going to tie that off. Uh, 
Get rid of that. Those laser dub, I'm going to start with the belly. I usually use a lighter color for the belly. Really? And I usually use a little sparser bunch for the belly of the fly. But the fibers on this are all mixed, you know, like dubbing. And I want them parallel. So what I do is kind of roll this up in a clump. I'm going to get just a little bit more. I'm going to roll it up in a clump. Then I'm just going to pull on the ends of them and make two bunches. Then put the bunches back together with the fibers parallel. And if I do that several times, pretty soon I'll have all the fibers in this dubbing material running parallel instead of having a mixed dubbing bunch. And I flip it over and do, do the same thing from both ends. And once I've got those pretty much all parallel now, I take one end that's pretty even and I tie it in with just a little bit of the little bit of the material facing to the rear. Tie it down with just a couple wraps with the bulk of the material coming out over the eye of the fly. I'm going to flip the fly back over and I'm going to do the same process with the darker color on top of the fly. I'm going to tie this one in the same way. A little short stub to the rear, the bulk of the material hanging out over the front. And I'm going to do like a bullet head with this fly. I'm going to pull the rest of that material back and wrap a couple wraps over it. And this little stub of material under here will kind of push up on the main bunch of material and it'll give this fly a little bit of hump in the back and it'll taper off so it has a realistic profile in the water. I flip the fly over, do the same thing with the belly material. And wrap that all down good. Then you can finish the fly right now, even though we don't have the cone on it. And I'm not too worried about this whip finish or have how neat this is. It's all going to get buried underneath the cone. I've got a, a nylon dubbing brush that I comb through this dubbing material with. And it kind of tapers it out. And it'll make that make that material flow. So now that, that material tapers off from this more bulk in the front and it's brushed out and it's more of a veil, it's got a natural taper in the back. And the fish skulls have a plating on them, it makes that color very durable. Occasionally a little bit of that plating will build up in the slot. So before I get ready to glue this on, I'm just going to test fit it, make sure none of that plating is built up in there. Once I know it's on there, once I know it goes on, then I can put my glue in and not worry about um, messing around making the head fit with the glue already on the shank. Another thing you'll notice about this head is there's a flat side and a more curved side. There's a little more weight in the curved side, so whichever side of your fly you want to ride down in the water, you want to put the heavy side of that down. In this case, the hook point's going to ride down, so I'm going to put the curved side of the fish skull down. Once I'm all set to mount it, take a little bit of gap filling super glue and put that on the very front part of the head, the whip finish area. And then slide the fish skull up over. Kind of wiggle it tight into position, and it'll set in that glue. Now to keep the fish skull from coming off the front in case the glue joint were to fail, I start the thread back on the front of the hook. And just a whip finish or two will make enough of a bump of thread in front of the fish skull that it won't pull back off if the glue fails. 
And the fish skulls come with um, adhesive eyes that you can use. Uh, they have a little socket right here uh, for an eyeball. Or you can just uh, use any color eye that you, you can buy if you want to use a different color than what they provide. So I'm going to put a little bit of super glue in the eye socket. Take one eyeball, put him in there, find a little tool to give it a little press. Just hold it in place for a few seconds. Now some of the glue will squeeze out around this eye, so you don't want to handle it by the head for a few minutes even after you've glued, glued these eyes in. Flip it over. Get the other side. And you're ready to go.